Welcome to the John and Heidi Show podcast. John and Heidi. Here's John and Heidi. Thank you so much for listening to the John and Heidi Show this weekend. Hey, baby, how you doing? I'm fantastic. It's the weekend. It is, and I'm excited because uh, even though we don't have a guest this weekend, uh, we, because we try to steer clear of guests on our weekend program, I do have counter proverbs and counter proverbs we're okay. going to go through today. So these are things. I'll give you one ex- one example. Actions speak louder than words. You've heard that, right? Yes, absolutely. But how about the pen is mightier than the sword? I've heard that. Those kind of contradict each other. I have a whole bunch of those. And I was reading these and I'm like, wow, I've never really thought about it before. So depending on the point you want to make, just pull out the right proverb and you are all set. All right. Coming up here in a bit, we're going to... I don't think that contradicts each other. Yeah. Actions speak louder than words. So go do something. Don't just say it. Then the pen is mightier than the sword. Just write them a letter. Don't go do something. No, no, no. See, that's not the way I take it. I I take that as, as the pen... For example, taking action by signing into law something that the people did not vote for, like the president doing his, uh, what are they called? When he just vetoes, makes something up and signs it into law and okay. it's done. <laughs> well, there you go. Like that's way mightier than some sword. Then we'll get to some proverbs and Heidi can shoot me down on all of them. <laughs> that and much more on this edition of the John and Heidi Show. <laughs> Today is a special day, Heidi. Do you know what today is? What is today, John? Well, let me tell you. We've got a whole darn weekend to talk about. Let's start with Saturday, September the 10th, Farmers Consumer Awareness Day, International Drive Your Studebaker Day, National Day of Remembrance for Aborted Children Day, National National Hollerin' Contest Day, National Iguana Awareness Day, Prairie Day, Swap Ideas Day, and Suicide Prevention Day. So all of that, Saturday, September 10th. Then, of course, Sunday, September 11th, is Patriot Day, the day that we remember what happened on September 11th, 2001. Sunday, September 11th, is also Pet Rock Day. I think that September 11th should be nothing else from here on out. But this day has other things that were here already, like Grandparents Day is Sunday, Libraries Remember Day, Miss America Pageant Day, National Day of Service and Remembrance, which is a nice one, National Hug Your Hound Day, and remember Freedom Day. So that's what's going on this weekend. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show. John and Heidi. Email marketing is affordable and a proven way to grow your business. If it's done right, you can stay in contact with your customers to let them know when you have new things to offer. You stay in control the whole time, too. You decide when the messages are sent and you decide what is being said. So you're constantly in control of your business image. You can do this, but don't try it on your own. Team up with one of the biggest names in email marketing, Constant Contact. Sign up for a free trial right now at Radiosavings.com. Sign up now at Radiosavings.com. You know it's true because you heard it on the radio. Coming up, an unusual way to get somebody to recover quickly from paralysis. This is just the weirdest story ever. Imagine suffering from uh, botulism paralysis, where you, uh, when you recover, you're completely aware of everything around you. You can hear, you can see, you can smell, you can sense. All of those things are intact. The only problem is you're totally paralyzed for some reason. But you recover everything else, but you can't move. This is what happened to a woman not too long ago. Somebody told the hospital staff, hey, you know what? She really likes Celine Dion. So the hospital (laughs) decided to play some music from Celine Dion nonstop for two weeks, hoping maybe this would help. When the paralysis left the woman, one of the first joys she experienced was stopping the music because... What they found out was, in fact, she hated Celine Dion music. (laughs) That's what I was going to say. This would be all that it would take for me to get out of bed to go over and turn off the... The friend apparently doesn't know her very well or thought, hey, I got a tricky idea. I'm going to get her out of bed. Oh, she loves... You got the theme for Titanic. Could you loop that for 24 (laughs) hours straight? And I got to tell you something. That was a beautiful, wonderful, amazing song. It was overplayed. But it was overplayed. So many songs, like the Macarena. That was such a great song until... The Macarena was a great song? It was. Otherwise, it wouldn't have been played 10 billion times over and over and over. I never liked the Macarena. Achy Breaky Heart was a great song. I never liked Achy Breaky Heart. These are songs... These are horrible examples that you are are giving. Don't Worry, Be Happy. Okay, all of now these that songs, one I liked. All of these songs were great songs, but they got overplayed. And that's what happened with Celine Dion's song as well. So you can disagree with me if you'd like. Heidi already has. 
<laughs> I know that's a shock. We agree on everything. Okay, almost nothing. All right. Anyway, this young lady was shocked out of a coma. Well, I yeah, guess it wasn't that quite that. That worked for me too. Her paralysis was cured because right out of bed of Celine Dion. Near far wherever. <laughs> wow. You know. All right. We'll go on. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show. The John and Heidi Show is brought to you in part by the Keystone Treatment Center. This is your brain, and this is your brain on drugs. We share silly stories here on the program, but addiction is no joke. If you or someone you know suffers with an addiction to drugs or alcohol, make today the day you seek help. Call toll-free 844-204-1055. That's a toll-free number. Again, 844-204-1055. And this is your brain on drugs. Bribing your way out of a drunk driving conviction only works if you're, I don't know, maybe it never works. Police in Iowa City say a man tried to buy his way out of a drunken driving bust with sandwiches. (laughs) Yeah, that's going to work. Mark Booth offered a free sub in exchange for being let go. A free sub. It's like, hey, if you guys let me go, I'll give you this sub that I got here. (laughs) I mean, the whole sub? Not just a bite of it? Yeah, you have the whole sub, man. You just let me go. Let me go. I'll go on my merry way. I'm going to slide this foot long your way. I'm going to look the we'll other way like and none of this happened. act like this didn't happen. Man. <laughs> didn't work out. So the guys in Iowa City decided, hey, we can get our own subs. Yeah. You're a drunk that was driving, and that's a bad idea. So, yeah, he, he probably didn't get to eat his sub, but he was introduced to some other foot longs. <laughs> oh. <laughs> or six inches. I don't know. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Oh, I shouldn't have gone there, should I? That's Thanks. typically a me comment. I know. I, I knew that's what you were thinking, so I just said what you were thinking. I'm a little proud right now. I know I'm not you gonna are. Lie. All right. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show. John and Heidi. Now, your moment of dub. Before I even get to the story, I want to make sure I tell you, we are gun owners, and we believe we very strongly in our Second Amendment. And I think Absolutely. there are a lot of people listening that are gun owners. And even if you're not a gun owner, you need to know that not all gun owners are idiots. Right. Now we're going to lead into a story about a gun owner that's an idiot. Okay. Not only is he a gun owner, he's a Russian gun shop owner, and he's been hospitalized after he accidentally shot himself in the head. Wow. Yeah. How do you how do you accidentally well, shoot yourself in the head? That's a he was demonstrating to a, a customer how the gun's trigger action is really. Oh, this is a touchy trigger. Let me show you. Holds it to his head and pulled the trigger. Oh my. Now, you might have already guessed, he forgot that it was loaded. That's what he said. Well, oh, man, I forgot it was loaded. The only reason he's not dead right now is because the gun was loaded with rubber bullets. I if it had why been, he would have loaded it with rubber bullets. I don't, he was probably demonstrating how rubber bullets work to somebody else. Anyway, the guy uh, apparently is not all there because he shot himself in the head. You don't ever. This is the first... First rule, rule of thumb, of never point a gun at anything unless you want that thing dead. And you always period. assume it's loaded. Even if you just always. looked and you know that it's not loaded, always assume it's loaded. Even if you loaded. think it's not loaded, you don't point it at something no, unless at you all. want to kill. Yeah. so Because that's this what guy, that weapon is for. It's to kill. This guy was not uh, thinking, and he earns our moment of duh. Coming mm. up, your scoop of the day. The Scoop of the Day is brought to you by Wells Blue Bunny. If you want delicious ice cream, be sure to look for the Blue Bunny. Sure to have your favorite flavors. Learn more at BlueBunny.com. Now, your Scoop of the Day. An unnamed police officer in Minneapolis is being investigated for a a bad habit that he has, breaking into the Como Zoo and feeding Pop-Tarts to the gorilla. (laughs) Oh, that's adorable. Why would he get in trouble for that? Because they're not supposed to have that. (laughs) <laughs> three gorillas named Schroeder. But he likes it. Yeah, Schroeder, Gordy, and Togo. So there's three gorillas involved. They've been fed Kellogg's <laughs> breakfast foods called Pop-Tarts. Security guards spotted the officer on surveillance cameras. The zoo says the animals have not suffered any ill effects from this experience, but they've never eaten the sugary treat before. And he's like, I did too last Wednesday. <laughs> Leave the guy. I, I mean, so, what is the big deal? It's not like he stole a gorilla. No. He's just giving it a snack we were at uh where were we i love gorillas it was in omaha nebraska at that zoo it's yeah. a beautiful zoo oh. and they had a little itty bitty monkey that you know it's in like this gigantic zoo and they the things are all over the place and the monkey was like a foot away from us yeah i'm sitting there looking i was like 
that doesn't seem safe because, like, if somebody wanted to, like, grab that monkey and throw it in their purse, they probably could. Because it was and then Heidi very said, tiny. Grab him quick. I got my purse. <laughs> no, she, <laughs> she didn't really say I that. I totally would have. No, she didn't say that, but she probably would have. I she, would love to have a monkey. Haven't you always wanted a monkey? That's right. Hey, a new survey of mostly middle-aged adults reveals that among people aged 45 to 54, one in nine show signs of hearing impairment. Let me say that again. One in nine show signs of <laughs> hearing impairment. That was for people 45 to 54. North Korea has unveiled their own version of Netflix. Guess what they call their version of Netflix in North Korea? I have no clue. I don't know why they call it this, but it's called Manbang. <laughs> what? <laughs> M-A-N... B-A-N-G. I'm yeah. only assuming that means something else in their language. I would hope so. <laughs> More than a third of U.S. adults sleep less than seven hours a night. Many of them report troubles concentrating and remembering and even troubles driving. The Center for Disease Control and Prevention reported these statistics in two separate studies. In one study, about 35% of the people surveyed in 12 states said they slept less than seven hours a night on average. The second study, based on a national survey, found about 23% said they had trouble concentrating because they were tired. Another 18% struggled to remember things, and 11% had difficulty driving or commuting. So that's kind of concerning. Hmm. So that's for people who get less than seven hours of sleep a night, and I think I always get less than seven hours of sleep. Huh. I mean, almost every night. I, I don't, but I don't have trouble. What were we talking about again? <laughs> Just kidding. I don't have trouble concentrating or driving or any of those other things. Although Heidi is smiling because she thinks I have trouble with all of that. Uh, yeah, pretty much. I don't have trouble concentrating. And that's because you don't get enough sleep. I don't, so. I don't have trouble remembering things. I just don't do the things you ask me to do. <laughs> well, my, my brother shared something on Facebook that I thought was hilarious. It said, uh, you don't have to keep, keep hounding me to do, to do whatever it was he was talking about. Uh, how did it go? It said... Something about. You don't have to keep asking us to do things every six months. We'll do it. We'll get around to it every, we'll when around we get around to it. it. You, you don't, don't have, have to keep, keep reminding me every six months. months. Something like that. Yeah. I wish I remembered. If I got more sleep, I'd be able to do that right. <laughs> but it's true. If you want to turn back the clock 10 years, you need to get a dog. Researchers found that dogs make us more active, helping us feel 10 years younger. Dog owners have lower levels of depression, which is why researchers suggest getting a pooch for mama and papa. Hmm. They'll feel younger and they'll be less depressed. Our dogs, by the way, are hilarious. They crack me up. So I can see, I don't know that they necessarily help us get more exercise. Maybe a little bit. I take bit. them for walks. I probably so, yeah. should. You should take me for a walk. Hook me I on a should. leash and drag me along. All right. This has been your scoop of the day. We've got something special coming your way. John and Heidi. When it comes to politics, quite often you have an opinion, especially for this election. How would you like a platform to let your opinion be heard? PoliticalStorm.com is that platform. It's a website with news from both sides, and you can chime in on any story, and you can add your own stories. You may even be invited to join me on my podcast for a chance to share your opinion, whether we agree or not. Sign up today at PoliticalStorm.com. You have a choice, and now you have a voice as well. PoliticalStorm.com. John and Heidi. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show this weekend. We talked about this a little earlier. We've got proverbs and counter-proverbs. So these are kind of contradictions. And the one that I used earlier, Heidi disagreed that there was really a contradiction because the example I used was this. Actions speak louder than words. And then the contradiction is the pen is mightier than the sword. But you disagree that those are contradictions? Well, the pen in the wrong hands yeah. can, can be way more dangerous than a sword. But that's where they're saying actions speak louder than words. And the next one is it's about the words. You know, the pen is mightier than the sword. So let's look at the rest of them and see if you agree or disagree. You tell me thumbs up or thumbs down. Or maybe you just say it since people can't see that on the radio. All right. Tell me if you agree. Look before you leap. Have you heard that before? I have, and I agree with that. How about he who hesitates is lost? Are those disagreements there? Those are disagreements, but you must look before you leap. I agree. Don't hesitate too long because you'll miss out on opportunities. Okay. But you've got to make sure that what you're leaping you into look. isn't dangerous. How about this one? Many hands make light work. And I agree with that. Too many cooks spoil the broth. I agree with that. And I think what they're saying there is the cook is the one in charge. <laughs> You don't want if you have too many leaders, nothing gets done. You okay. have to have a leader, and then you have to have helpers. And the hands in the kitchen would be the helpers. There you go. How about this one? The clothes make the man. So you know the way you look on the outside is important, but don't judge a book by its cover. Okay, 
but it's really hard. I mean, it, it, it is important to be successful. You have to look well. Yes. And like you wouldn't want a, the president of the United States, for example, coming in in Birkenstocks and sweatpants. So yeah. it's very important. Maybe on his day off. So <laughs> not, not even on his day off. <laughs> How about these? Nothing ventured, nothing gained. And better be safe than sorry. So these are kind of, again, okay, proverbs. Ghosts can go together. You can venture and be safe. Why mm-hmm. would you not go on the, a venture and, and double check and make uh, sure you're being safe? I can't wait to hear this one. The bigger, the better. But the best things come in small packages. <laughs> so, <laughs> bigger the price tag. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> How about this? That's not where I thought you were going to go with that, but I'm really glad you went there. Instead. <laughs> Absence makes the heart grow fonder. Out of sight, out of mind. So, you know, if you're gone, I'm going to think about you all the time. But if you're gone, I'm not going to think about you. <laughs> <laughs> that one is a contradiction. I agree. How about this? What will be, will be. And then the other is, life is what you make it. So it's like, what will be, will be. You're in charge of what will be. <laughs> so I think it's really funny because all of these I agree with, but I never thought of the fact that they contradict each other. Cross your bridges when you come to them. This one is forewarned is forearmed. I've never heard that before. Me either. How about what's good for the goose is good for the... Gander. Yeah. Uh, one man's meat is another man's poison. Never heard that one. Yeah. With, with age comes wisdom. Okay. Out of the mouth of babes come all wise sayings. Uh, I've heard out of the mouths of babes. I guess I've never heard anybody finish that sentence. <laughs> out of the mouth of babes. Out of the mouths of babes. He's like, yeah, right. And that's where it usually like, ends. When in Rome, I agree. <laughs> What's all this when in Rome stuff? What do you do when you're in Rome? I don't know what you mean by that. And then our final one on here, the more the merrier. Have you heard that before? Yes. Two's company, three's a crowd. <laughs> <laughs> okay i do agree with that on both sides because three yeah. people somebody always feels it has to be an even number yeah it doesn't even have to be an it even has number. to be an even number so if it was a hundred and especially with girls oh my gosh yeah, you I, get three girls in a room and there will be problems we, every single we've time. seen that now i'm not going to say it's every time because i don't know everybody in every situation but our daughter has had friends over and i remember one time a friend that had been over by herself it was just her and taylor and they got along swimmingly. I mean, uh-huh. they got along great. And then she had a sleepover where there were like four or five girls. Five. There was were a there total five? of five. It was Ooh. an odd number. Is that what it was? Uh, yeah. You, can, you so can't have that. They they were all in one room talking. And I walk in the kitchen. And this other girl's out in the kitchen like texting or doing something. I said, hey, is everything all right? She goes, I'm fine. No, uh, she felt left and, out and, and ignored. I said, I said, because I'm, I'm a man and I, I speak woman uh, because I'm married to this one over here. And when she says, I'm fine. When she says it that way, I know that doesn't mean I'm fine. I said, <laughs> so what's wrong? And she goes, well, nobody wants to talk to me. And I said, well, I'll talk to you. You know, is, is everything okay? So I'm trying to, and it was that she was feeling left out. because yeah, absolutely. Everybody else was talking to somebody else, and she was all by herself, and I felt bad for her. So I'm like, hey, you can sit and talk to an old fat man. I'll, Here's the thing. I'll talk to you. She wasn't by herself. She chose to be I know. by herself. I know. I, I remember and the story. chose to exclude herself from the conversations. But it happens every time. When you get young <laughs> girls together. I, I was a young girl. I remember this. I remember company, the drama with girls. It's awful. And that's why I chose well, to hang out with guys instead. There you go. It was so Because much the more easier. the merrier in that case. So. <laughs> All right. Anyway, our proverbs and counter proverbs. And that was a fun little experiment to see how Heidi and I would agree or disagree. And I think we agreed for the most part. I think so. There were some of those that I don't know that we could agree. (laughs) Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show this weekend. John and Heidi. This is the world's first and only seven-time lottery game grand prize winner. Since I endorsed Lottolicious, I have won something every single draw. When you join, you'll be giving them the set of numbers that you want them to play, and that's what they will play for you. You don't have to worry about running to the store to buy your tickets. They take care of all that. So if you're looking for the best way to play the lottery, go to RadioLottoPool.com and join today. Again, that's RadioLottoPool.com. John and Heidi. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? Grapes. Okay, before I tell you this, I don't want everybody trying this today, although I'm going to probably try it. Grapes explode when you put them in the microwave. Really? Yeah. We don't have any grapes. We need grapes. <laughs> have to on the, put that on a list. We need grapes. <laughs> <laughs> Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? Thomas Edison got a patent for making concrete furniture. Really? Yeah. yeah. And 
a cigar that was supposed to burn forever, like it would never burn out. Really? Yeah, that's kind of crazy. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's up, John? A large, flawless emerald is worth more than a large, a large flawless diamond. So an mm. emerald, a really good emerald, is worth more than a really good diamond of the same size. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? The average human drinks about 16,000 gallons of water in a lifetime. Which reminds me, i got to use the restroom. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. And our final fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? On average, the human scalp has about 100,000 hairs. Oh. Charlie is a little under that. <laughs> he, he's bald on the top. So for those of you who listen to Tuesdays with Charlie, that's who I'm talking about. For those of you that don't know what I'm talking about, eh, you're lost. <laughs> All right. A couple of fun facts for you right there this weekend. Thanks for listening to The John and Heidi Show. John and Heidi. Email marketing is affordable and a proven way to grow your business. If it's done right, you can stay in contact with your customers to let them know when you have new things to offer. You stay in control the whole time, too. You decide when the messages are sent and you decide what is being said. So you're constantly in control of your business image. You can do this, but don't try it on your own. Team up with one of the biggest names in email marketing, Constant Contact. Sign up for a free trial right now at Radiosavings.com. Sign up now at Radiosavings.com. John and Heidi. Thank you so much for joining us this weekend. We've got a helping of bacon wrapped chocolate covered bagels that we're going to talk about here. How does that sound to you? That sounds fantastic. Oh, some of these things, uh, great foods that we were told were bad for you, turned out to not be so bad for you. So forget everything you've ever learned about unhealthy foods like chocolate, popcorn, and pizza. They're good for you, according to this expert. And there are many other forbidden foods that are not so bad, like bacon. It contains fat, but it's also one of the best sources of iron that you could put in your body. It is packed with muscle-building protein and loaded with vitamins B and thiamine and riboflavin. Wow. Every time I eat bacon, I think, hmm, I love this riboflavin. Yeah, you do. Mm. I have not had bacon in a long time. Have you noticed? Like when you go to the store and get stuff, you always ask, you, hey, what do you want me to get? And I never ask you to bring bacon home anymore because I, I quit eating bacon like a month and a half ago. Okay. I really miss bacon. I should put Why that back. Why did you quit eating because bacon? Because I thought it was bad for me. And I, well, my body is a temple. Well, it's not good for you. Cl- so. <laughs> 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 what I meant to say, my body is the size of a Whoa. temple. <laughs> uh, pizza is actually good for you. The cooked tomatoes in the sauce in America's favorite fast food are sources of one of the most powerful antioxidants known to man, lycopene. It fights cancer, slashes your heart risk, heart disease risk, rather. Harvard researchers say one eye-popping study showed that people who ate pizza once a week cut their cancer risk in half. Oh, wow. I love pizza. I do, too. Dark chocolate. It fights cancer better than green tea. Studies show that. And it also helps prevent heart disease. A study from Harvard graduates found that people who were chocolaholics lived longer. How about popcorn, Heidi? I like popcorn. Mayo Clinic researchers call it a quality carbohydrate, high in fiber and low in calories. It is best to pop it in monounsaturated mono fat like canola or olive oil. What do we use? Whatever we comes with it. We don't use the, that. I don't know. <laughs> what do we use? You're like a stick of we butter? We like our popcorn to taste good. Yeah. I don't know. We're going to have to check this stuff out. I'll see if I can it's find some. It's bright something. orange, so yeah. I'm pretty <laughs> sure it's not. It looks like Cheetos. <laughs> I don't think that's... And the last thing on the list is bagels. Ball State University researchers found that the little disc-shaped treats provide cyclists with as much energy as a granola bar. So they're saying that bagels ain't so bad for you after all. So big, long list of yummy stuff that made me hungry. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show. John and Heidi. Let's talk business. If you're in business, you need a website. Come on, it's 2016. Do you really think the internet thing is not going to catch on? Many business owners that don't have a website think it's just too expensive. Well, now it's not. You can actually build a website set up for less than $30 a month. If you need help designing it or just laying something out, we're here to help you. Get a free trial right now at radiosavings.com. You can actually build the site and see it online for free during this trial. So why not check it out at radiosavings.com. If you have a handsome boss, be careful. You might work extra hours for no pay. <laughs> I, must be, <laughs> I must be pretty darn good looking because Heidi works all the time for free. <laughs> Thanks, baby. If you find yourself working extra hours, maybe without extra pay, it could be because of the way you look at your boss. According to a new survey from Italy, workers there are more wor- willing to work overtime without extra pay 
if their boss is a handsome man. Mm. The study among 350 firms found that both male and female workers were less likely to ask for a raise and more ready to tolerate the stress if the boss was a good-looking dude. Mm. The report suggested that this phenomenon was unique to Italy, a country where most bosses are male. So there you go. Hmm. That is kind of an interesting thing. I never really thought of that before. Yeah. So can I convince you to... I would suppose it would have the same effect on men if it was an attractive female, though, I would assume. Heidi, I'm going to need you to start working weekends. Oh, wait, we're working weekends now. Yeah, we are. <laughs> and I wasn't very happy about How much that more do you either. Make? How much more do you make for doing weekends? Not even a cent. <laughs> I must be one good looking dude. <laughs> 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 Probably not. All right. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show. John and Heidi. Coming soon, plants with no caffeine. Yeah, you better get plenty of sleep in the future. Uh, they may have a huge breakthrough when it comes to making decaffeinated coffee. A group of scientists believe they are on the way to breeding coffee plants that produce decaf. Coffee plants that contain no caffeine could become a reality. Why would anybody want that? Well, scientists have succeeded in cloning the gene responsible for the enzyme crucial to the synthesis of caffeine in both coffee and tea. Now, that sentence that I made it through without messing up was really confusing. I'm going to do it again. No, I got it. I they succeeded it. in cloning the gene responsible for the enzyme that's crucial to the synthesis of caffeine. Okay. Anyways... Why would they want to do this? By blocking this gene, caffeine-free coffee and tea can be grown. Right now, they grow it with caffeine and have to remove the caffeine, which then they take and then they put it in, I think, like Jolt or something. I'm not sure. I don't know what they do with that. They got to do something with it. But uh, this would be a way for them to grow it with no caffeine. You don't look impressed. No, not at all. I don't see the point of decaffeinated coffee. The whole point of drinking coffee is for the caffeine. All right. Why There's some people who like the say, taste of it that don't I... want the caffeine. Yeah, they were so preoccupied with whether or not they could, they didn't think of whether or not they should. Hey. It's a waste of a good coffee plant. Hey, you, people, working on the decaf plants. Heidi yawns at your efforts. She's like, oh, oh hum, Work whatever. on something useful. Work on, I mean, if you can do that kind of impressive crap, work on cancer. There you go. Coming right? soon. On the way, we're going to talk about how Aunt Jemima is, there's a warrant for her arrest in Washington. We'll tell you what's going on there. John and Heidi. When it comes to politics, quite often you have an opinion, especially for this election. How would you like a platform to let your opinion be heard? PoliticalStorm.com is that platform. It's a website with news from both sides, and you can chime in on any story, and you can add your own stories. You may even be invited to join me on my podcast for a chance to share your opinion, whether we agree or not. Sign up today at PoliticalStorm.com. You have a choice, and now you have a voice as well. PoliticalStorm.com. John and Heidi. They put out an APB for Aunt Jemima in Tacoma, Washington. Police are on the lookout for her in Tacoma. It appears the lady has hit five libraries in the city, pouring maple syrup onto the late night book drops. Oh. Yeah. Why? Destroying over $10,000 in books, videotapes and CDs. Okay. It's probably not Aunt Jemima herself, but somebody using her syrup or log cabin syrup or some other syrup. Regardless of what the syrup is, somebody is really causing a oh. sticky mess in Tacoma, Washington. A spokesperson for the library there, David Dominski says uh, vandalizing library books is nothing new, but we've never seen anything that compares to this. Uh, it says, this has been the most damaging action anyone has done to us, oh. end quote. I wonder po if she's like a disgruntled former employee. Like get, I don't know. It could be a he. Something. could be a he as well. We don't know. That's true. Could just be some kids that are playing around. That's Police not funny. Police are following leads and encouraging residents to be on the lookout for a suspicious person hanging out with, Walking around with maple, maple syrup. syrup. In the meantime, all library book drops have been closed indefinitely. So right now they're just saying, well, sorry. <clears throat> you have sorry. to bring them inside when you want to return them. Yeah. Used to make it convenient, but somebody went and ruined that for yeah. us. Yeah, well. It's all fun and games till somebody dumps sticky syrup all over the books and CDs. I don't blame them for can't closing them. I don't them. either. That's exactly what I would have done too. That's a good idea. Now, how are they going to come up with a way to ruin them inside? I mean... You know, you're going to go in and Walk dump this. Walk in with syrup in your purse and then go dump it on the shelves, I suppose. <sighs> Way to go, Heidi. Thanks for giving them some ideas. <laughs> you asked me. Oh, I don't. How? I should have never I'm asked a problem solver. your criminal mastermind, <laughs> 
how to <laughs> vandalize something or cause havoc because I know that you're going to come up with an answer. I mean, why do I even put myself in this situation? All right. Coming up, we've got two good news stories. Yeah, two. One is about reading books and the other one's about animals, specifically dogs. That's on the way on the John and Heidi Show. John and Heidi. This portion of the John and Heidi Show is brought to you by the John and Heidi Show. That sounds kind of funny, but it's true. Go to your local radio station and ask them to start carrying the John and Heidi Show. Here's the best part. They can carry the show for free. They play a couple commercials, but it doesn't cost them anything every month. So if you know a radio station that could use a little bit of help, send them our way. Send them to johnandheidyshow.com. Again, johnandheidyshow.com. We would love to do a radio program in your community. Then you could listen to the podcast and listen to us on the radio. John and Heidi. We always try to wrap things up around here with some good news. And, you know, during the week I come up with such great stories, I don't get time to get them all in, so I'm going to squeeze two in today. Okay. So I better get to it. If you're an animal lover, specifically a dog lover, you're going to love I this. I am. Happy ending to a lost dog story. Edward Casa was boating in the middle of Lake Michigan with his wife and their mo- their son's 10-month-old puppy fell overboard. That's sad. Aww. By the time they realized he was gone, he was nowhere to be found. Aww. They called and let people know that he was missing. There were no sightings until the next morning. Somebody reportedly saw the dog and he swam over six miles and then walked another 12 miles through the woods oh my when he was finally returned to his owners. How cool is that? That's great that they found him. I think the poor so too. Little thing must have been so scared. I bet that dude was swimming like Michael Phelps, Aww. or that I couldn't think of the other guy's name. What Ryan? What's his name? I don't know. Lochte. There you go. He's swimming like Ryan Lochte, trying to get away from the. Was he a swimmer? People. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what he did. See, that joke didn't even work. I just knew he had white hair. It, it didn't. It didn't work on multiple levels because I didn't really have the end of the joke. Let's <laughs> move on to the next good news story. When he was just two, Jeremy Schuler was reading books in English and Korean. Wow. At age six, he was studying calculus. Now, according to Yahoo News, at, a, at an age when most kids are just going to middle school, this 12-year-old is a freshman at Cornell, the youngest in the Ivy League school. Jeremy is the homeschooled child of two aerospace engineers wow. who lived in Grand Prairie, Texas, and he applied to Cornell. While Jeremy's elite level SAT and advanced placement test scores in math and science at age 10 showed that he was intellectually ready for college then. Collins said that what sealed the deal was, was his parents' willingness to move to Ithaca. Jeremy's father, Andy Schuler, transferred from Lockheed Martin in Texas to its location in upstate New York. So talk about a kid that's got a bright future. Holy cow, yeah. I mean, this is, he's 12, and he's in an Ivy League school, and his SAT levels were off the charts. That's insane. His mom and dad are both rocket scientists. So, you know, sometimes it is rocket science. I have a link to that story and the others on our Facebook page. And I think that says a lot for homeschooling as well. Honestly. You can read more about that and the other story at Facebook.com slash John and Heidi Show. Time to say goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, everybody. Have a great weekend. Thank you so much for listening.